Ziel ist weg, schon. Fine, everything's fine. Into the cave we go. Oh, maybe. <laughs> Just bend the rim, it's fine. All right, does it spin both tires? It does. <laughs> oh, is it just, it won't even take any. Oh, are you holding it closed? <laughs> yep. Yeah. <laughs> Pro tip, if you ever have a humongous sidewall leak. Yeah. I think she's done for. I think she's dickered fully. Yeah, yeah that's... Oh. <laughs> Surprising, actually. Pick this up from my friend Justin for cheap. We are going to do what, Mr. Spiva? Uh, we are going to slap in a 7875, uh, probably a 0.81, um, and see what is the minimum we can do to hopefully make somewhere between four and 500 horsepower. That sounds like so much fun. <laughs> We're gonna do this with an FP cast log manifold, either some decap truck injectors and, or some DECA 60s, depends on what we got laying around, and likely kind of see where this factory fuel pump gets us. If not, yeah. then we'll uh, sneak something a little bit bigger in there. But idea of this is to kind of do it as cheap as humanly possible and keep it nice and reliable and whatnot, minus the 4L60, of course. That's gonna stay and we'll kind of just kind of see what it, uh, how it behaves and see what it'll get us. We're going to uh, start pulling it apart and assess what we've got. But yesterday we cleaned about 60 pounds of dirt off of it. Seems pretty healthy. We got the AC running yesterday. So we Motor will be retaining good. AC. <laughs> AC is staying. Yeah. This is Texas, baby. We don't uh we don't play around without AC here. So we're gonna get to it and have some fun. Alright, Spive, what do we got? Uh, we got the airbox out, fan out, shroud. Uh, we found out the belts are really old. They may be original. They still had GM on them. Those are definitely original. <laughs> <laughs> we were going to start moving cooling stuff out of the way, and we noticed it's quite crusty on the outside. And I don't even know if I can touch it. It's hard to see. It's but it's rusty. Right, it was, you can see it on the screwdriver, but yeah, it's a bit it's, stanky. It's stanky. Oh. Uh, Let's pick a different spot. <laughs> oh, it cracked a little. Oh, yeah. Oh, right here, right here. Oh, nope. Nope. <laughs> anyways, we cracked it everywhere already. Anyways, there was hella crunch noises there. In honor of being super rusty, I want to see what comes out of it. So, this, I've already got my hose pointed down. I'm going to turn this. I can get it. I can get it. It's going, it's going, it's going, it's going. Okay. You hear anything? I don't. I don't see anything, man. Dude, it should be going. I'm. I'm close, like close, 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 close. 
How long is it? I still don't Dude, hear it. it should be. Ah! <laughs> that's gonna be completely packed full of rust. Well, that's great. Time to get stabbing, I guess. Uh... Oh. Oh, I've stabbed flesh. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's flesh. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh baby, yeah. no. <laughs> uh, Not the best thing to see. It's a nice, but, uh, nice brick. All right. Can All we right. swirl it enough to get it started? There's, there's oh, something oh. there. Oh, uh, maybe. Oh. We could probably pressurize it a little bit. While he's doing that, we uh, we harvested from a local donor these lovely OEM set of oh, e-fans that are going on here. Oh, oh, go out the hose! <laughs> okay, yeah, we're, we're in the bucket now. Oh, good. We've got a gusher, finally. All right, cool, that's where we're at. <laughs> Ten seconds later. Yeah. <laughs> what did we find? <laughs> <laughs> so that's one of the flakes that came out it looks like several layers of it's almost like the truck rusted for a, a couple of years and then sat and then rusted again it made <laughs> so so you basically got tree rings yes so of, we, we could of, tell when it was operating when it wasn't it's, it's a <laughs> there's so much crap uh, show, yeah show the under show the oh under. yeah yeah it's okay. bad it's this is all just coolant chunks and absolute Four eight diarrhea. I mean, there's there's like quarter inch of shit in some of these areas. This is so bad. We got some squirt up here on accident. I mean, it's just it's coating everything. <laughs> that was fun. We're gonna spend some time in a, and decontaminate the coolant system of this car. Replace some lines and whatnot. Look, there's just a chunk hiding in there. Oh god, it's floating. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, I heard it hit the. It hey, had some mass it to look it. How thick it is. It's just. Yeah. Goop. I'm making a cart and Rock Auto. We're gonna replace the belts too. This had both OEM belts on it still uh, that were getting cracked. Yeah, it's definitely dry. It's it's the only one that's sounding a little sad. So it's only you know like six bucks just to replace that. So I don't feel too bad. We got a few maintenance things that we're gonna get for this coming, and then uh, I think we're gonna start tackling this uh, driver side manifold and uh, I'm sorry passenger side manifold and figure out how we're going to. Uh, retain air conditioning and our coolant stuff. Is that built-in filters? That is huge. <laughs> Hopefully. I've not seen that before. Um, Maybe it's an early, early OS thing? Yeah, I mean, I, most of the stuff I've dealt with is Later. 2002, yeah. you know, which is similar, but they, they did a lot of change, kind of like EGR. Yeah. Anything in truck I've done has always been 2002 or newer, so. Yeah, this is an early one, so it's got all the all the EGR junk on here. It doesn't matter because all that's going away. All right, so it is Monday morning. We figured we'd show you kind of where we left off on Friday. Um, got pretty much everything pulled out of it. Uh, we ended up pretty much mocking everything up on the passenger side here. We broke a bolt off, unsurprisingly, in the very back of the uh, head and the exhaust flange. Uh, the dipstick broke off. So we need to get to play the extract game on that. Um, that'll be fun. But this morning is going to be spent welding a uh, welding a nut on that little guy back there. You know we haven't looked, pulled the plugs out, but we found OEM belts, OEM hoses. Um, the fan's never been out. The fan shroud has never been off. Um, this is a awkwardly untouched. Uh, yeah. This is a 2000, so 22 years of untouched. Yeah. We were going to try and purchase a different um, accumulator. Yeah, accumulator dryer. Uh, but we were informed that you have the possibility of just bending it by sheer force <laughs> and hoping to not break this. Man, we've already bent down here. Uh, to make the manifold fit, which really wasn't that bad. No, it that, really doesn't look much different. That wasn't too bad. We managed to get that to uh, to clear our log manifold pretty pretty easily. So yeah, we're gonna we're gonna give this a go in a little bit. We're just gonna loosen the 
the clamp there and then uh, give this uh, the beans and see if we can uh, get it to rotate a bit and give it a bit more clearance for us to be able to uh, uh, build a downpipe there. Fresh out of the box. Straight out of China. <laughs> <laughs> Look how thick that flange is. Yeah, that's long <laughs> Man, this one is ugly too. We picked seemingly one of the uglier ones too. Yeah, oh, this is this that is. We we'll, don't need we'll it. We'll call it pseudo T4. It's uh, it's mostly there. These are <laughs> god awful. <laughs> <laughs> so first impressions of this thing is that uh, it needs some work with a die grinder to be uh. We also got the dink, dinked we, one. Yeah, we got we got one. Oh, that's, look at that! Oh wow, there's yeah, more blockage. <laughs> We're gonna be spending a minute with this with the die grinder. So some of the first oh. things we notice is this straight up just hits the plug back here uh, that would uh, normally house the coolant temp sensor on the driver's side cylinder head. Yep. So we're gonna have to notch this kind of area back here. It looked like it was pretty flat. We're gonna put a straight edge across it just to make sure. Uh, and then maybe take a little bit of material out of the horrendous manifold side ports. Um, yeah, those are, that's I'm, a catch all. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a, uh, that's foul. Granted, you know, the amount of power we're going for with this isn't a whole lot, but it's, uh, I don't want to pull this again, so we may as well do the work on the front end. I feel like it's, uh, it's still easier than trying to, like, make a stock manifold work or buy an expensive manifold. You're so. darn tootin'. <laughs> I like it for that reason. Weld our nut on and hopefully get that rear bolt extracted and we're going to get that turd on there and... Start getting this mocked up. Thanks to my brother Miller here. Not Miller Light this time. We got this bad boy here. Extracting great. If you ever need to remove a broken stud, as with anything else, bust out the welder. Weld the nut on it, and it comes right out. All right, so we reached into our cabinet of many ancient carbide burrs that are throwaways from the old DSM turbine housing and exhaust manifold porting days that we didn't use CNC tools for that. And this is literally less than 15 minutes of work. You could totally do this with a hand drill if you wanted to. Again, you don't really need to do this for the amount of power we're trying to make, but super quick, easy thing you can do. This material cuts like butter, so no regrets. So we're changing the oil on this and much like the coolant, we pulled the drain plug out and it just straight sat there for a second and dislodged a turd before any kind of liquid came out so I can only assume this has had a very long oil change interval for its entire at, life at one point at one point or at, or forever no the sludge built up and just hung out yeah you hear anything just checking to see if there's any chunks in the pan. We may have broke the dipstick off, so we may have also punched it in the pan. So we may have also tried to move that piece of metal around in the pan. We, so hope, it's, we hope it's in the pan. We're hoping it's all the way in there. If not, we'll find out about it eventually. <laughs> Why are you holding your hand like that? It's nasty. What's nasty? Uh, so we drained the oil, you saw that the other day, uh, and we have to take the pan off to make a um, drain tube fitting. <laughs> we need to put an oil return for the turbo bulkhead fitting. Yeah. Oh, 
Here, get, get, get you get you a thick chunk out of there. Oh, it's. Have you ever played in a sandbox as a child? <laughs> that is. It's kind of. It's not metallic. It's not metallic. Everything's it's just, gooey. It's low maintenance edition. Oh. I'm trying to get a good light on this so you get the the chunky sensation of uh, what's going on here, but that is the definition of like <laughs> the 90s power hour sludge it commercial. Is, it is so thick on this tray. Yeah. Oh. That is genuinely <laughs> gross. We're gonna definitely. I think we should clean this and then throw the entire pan in the parts washer. Yes. <laughs> That's why I wanted it, to do this. Let first. it bake. We we were just kind of uh, scratching at it through the the drain hole yesterday, uh, and just chunks kept coming out. So we kept doing it, and finally we were like, "Well, we need to pull the pan anyways yeah. uh, to do to do the oil return for the turbo." So we we're like, "All right, well, let's inspect it. We also need to tap the." Uh, we're gonna be tapping that for the turbo oil feed. Yep. Um, so yeah, revelations in uh, in maintenance right here. This is what happens when uh, the elderly do minimal maintenance, I suppose. <laughs> it could be worse. We don't see any metal. It's not anything scary. It's just kind of you know, just basic, very low maintenance car, I guess. You didn't even mess up the gasket. I don't, I highly doubt that's ever come off, right? It's going back on too. <laughs> yeah. There's no point Thanks, in not reusing LS it. LS reusable gasket. What else we got? We've, uh... Oh yeah, we got that. Yeah, I, I spent an hour or so this morning welding up the downpipe. We built this yesterday and just kind of tacked it in place and I've, obviously we have uh, actual work to do here, so we had to do other things but we buzzed it buzz this this morning we'll get this on the car i've got to punch a hole down there for the wideband bung and i'll get that buzzed on and then we should be able to make the exhaust shortly after that we've got another piece that'll go on there that we're just gonna use basic slip fitting on and the exhaust will come down here and we i think we might go out the side right in front of the passenger side tire so at least that's where we're at right now with it and we've got a little three inch flow through muffler three inch resonator that I think we're gonna use as well that's the plan and should be reasonably quiet but still sound pretty good excited that's where we're at currently all right so yesterday was kind of a late day we had a lot of you know actual work problems to deal with so barf yeah this is actual work okay is it yeah it's being sold like that so i hope it is <laughs> i suppose that's your job here it's not my job here but Shh. alas here we are spend some quality time in the wash cabinet here <laughs> with with varying degrees of uh uh heat and uh cleaners um but yeah it's looking pretty good now we tapped it um we decided to use a, a dash 10 just pipe fitting on here that we loctite it in place um nice and high up should work pretty good um we built our drain line for the turbo which i guess we can go look at and we the factory what is this called beats me okay well this thing that hangs off the side of the oil pan <laughs> uh, I don't know what it's called either uh, it's the cap I guess for the factory oil cooler provision is that what that is well I think an oil pressure sensor used to go here yeah okay well there was nothing oh, yeah, there you could also, they would just... also put a coil uh, cooler right there yeah too. this is a blanking plate in this case there was yeah. nothing here so we drilled a hole through that uh, and then put a Eighth NPT to 4 AN stainless fitting that is a force performance part available on the website on there so we can use that as a feed line for our new turbo. So we'll get that installed. It's nice and cleaned up, ready to go. But since we're over here and it's been a minute, we'll come over here and look at what we've been doing. Uh, we've got our nice 10 AN 
Don't you squeak those. You can tell the difference between a new one and a used one. This one's just like yeah. nice and happy. We're, this one's we're a playing dirty. arts bend game here since this is just yes, kind of Yes, we have a, a plethora of <laughs> used and reused. Uh -huh. So yeah, we're kind of cheating. Yeah. It's still budget if you're uh, reusing good usable things. So. Is that our, that's our IAT. Uh, it's a used GM IAT sensor, right? Yes, uh, out of the boost uh, Yeah, that's the one out of the boost yes. so <laughs> we'll be using that. We've got a MeFab uh, slash Spiva Fitment downpipe here that I took way too long taking together yesterday, which <coughs> goes over here. Yesterday? No, the day before I ended up welding this together. Comes out nice and down here. We got a wideband bung welded in here that we need to wire up. We've got our train flange courtesy of Motion Raceworks. I think it was 20, 24 bucks. Yeah, it's got a nice uh, <clears throat> O-ring seal in there that pretty much is perfect for this turbo. Uh, that's a dash 10 setup. Um, definitely, definitely good setup for this. Uh, and then our drain line will hook between there and the pan, as you know. Um, this turbo doesn't require coolant. It's a basic journal bearing setup, so we don't have to worry about uh, routing any of that stuff. And then really need to get our, I guess, fender liner in here and check kind of fitment and clearance with our, our new tile wastegate. Um, coolest part of the day, thanks to Anthony Harville, Adjustable Hammer Racing, for being a cool ass dude and sending us some freshly decapped and flowed fuel injectors factory E85 or flex uh, truck injectors that we are going to get in this bad boy so we have hella fuel <laughs> and tons and tons and tons of fuel for what we're trying to do here uh, and they will definitely give us plenty of overhead for uh, E85 liter so definitely appreciate that man yes once you start blowing up the 4L60 and we go 4L80 and then the rear end dies and then you make a lot more power then you can still keep the injector yes these will <laughs> they I think he said they came out to about 85 pound a minute and they're within about three percent of each other so they're totally totally super cool for what we're doing and we can't thank him enough for that also he is a force performance turbo distributor so definitely hit him up if you are looking for a turbocharger deal so thanks, man. We definitely appreciate it. I've forgotten about this for over the last few days. <laughs> I'm just gonna dump it on the grass. It's basically water, just for EPA record. Yeah, I put a little red dye in it for theatrical. No red dye. Just natural. Oh, pickup tube. Pickup tube. What do we do? Took it off, changed the O-ring, because it's a little flat. It's Definitely actually flat. In, it's honestly in pretty happy shape. No cracks, no pinchies, nothing weird. Yeah, it's... So so what do they do? They, they get cracked and then they, they suck air? Is that the issue? Uh, I think technically more often than not, people chit swap the oil pump or, or do some kind of work down there and then go to put it back in and cut it. Got or it. pinch it. And then they have a really bad day. Yeah. Um, this I imagine just, oil pressure goes to not very much. <laughs> yeah, and it just gets aerated and yeah. dies. Um, this is just me being paranoid. Yeah. Uh, based on what we've seen in the motor. Um, so. And I, we're literally I, there, right? <laughs> yeah. I already had the pan off, so just stick a new one on and. Yeah, we took some time through the bar saw, cleaned her up. It had a good bit of sludge in it from it having literal shite in the oil pan so all that's nice and clean we're gonna put this back in and uh and not pinch it and not pinch it in theory in theory in theory ba, ba, da, ba. have we been busy no not enough <laughs> but busy with work yeah stupid real work yeah what have uh what we got going on um, well, we installed the 34 inch radiator. It's big. <laughs> Which also means we have e thick, thick edition fans here. We bought a Chinesium. I 
should say I bought a Chinesium wiring harness for the fans that Spiva had to repin and yeah. recobble back together because it was they were trying to feed all the power through like three this I don't was know a, this was a power wire. wires <laughs> yeah <laughs> this is a size reference but yeah the uh I think it's about what 20 gauge maybe 18 gauge yeah, on a good day yeah it is very tiny not enough to support a pair of fans that are gobbling in yeah, Texas heat 30 amps worth of startup it yeah went torched yeah yeah uh it's wiring also it was wired wrong also so that... it was just completely wrong <laughs> <laughs> so there's that. Luckily we have things to, uh, pins and things to, to make relays and, and, and wire relays. Yeah. So we have all that laying around. Thank you, Wookie. Yep. Yeah, he lurks in the background somewhere, depending <laughs> on the day, of course. We were really worried that our random intercooler we had laying around uh, wasn't going to work. Because we don't feel like buying one. Course. Yeah, this is this is like we're in extreme budget hell currently. Yeah. Where we're just trying to do this functionally and cheaply with mostly stuff we've got laying around. Obviously, we had to buy a new radiator and some other, you know, various bits and pieces. But this was a look like a happy choice for for an intercooler core that we happen to have laying around. It's it's probably a little on the small side if should we ever start turning it up. But otherwise, it's uh, it's I think definitely it's 20, twenty-four by three by six. Yeah. Yeah, if we turn it up, we'll have to do something else. But yeah, it's <laughs> it's mildly inadequate of, for that, but a lot of other things that will die before this runs out of steam. Four L sixty. And then and then and then. Um, <laughs> and then and then and then. <laughs> so we are practicing the how much tubas can we fit between the lights. We decided we'd get happy with the router yesterday, and uh, we cut out a yeah, bunch we, of we, plastic. <laughs> we took out this this major hole, and I think we're gonna run, we have to cut out some more, but this one's gonna run this way. But it should all happily tuck behind the grill in between the headlights. Yeah, we're trying to do it mildly stealthy, but also like- <laughs> It's not. This radiator is much wider than our original one. We were planning on kind of just going through here, and now that's occupied, so. Yeah. Uh, this was seemed like the best option with this specific core. This core was too long to, to mount vertically without it just turning into a mess underneath the uh, the front of the truck and getting really low. Um, plus, we wanted to keep as much of the crash bar slash front end support junk intact as we could because I'm sure this truck will be playing sketchy games <laughs> and I would like to not be crumpled into a can so uh, there's that <laughs> we also don't weld aluminum i don't know how to weld aluminum i can sort of ghetto weld mild and stainless and whatnot as evidenced by our downpipe here so we're we're making this out of what looks like galvanized or or aluminized junk freaking two and a half inch tubing that we found in a water log uh, <laughs> a wa <yeah. laughs> literally a bucket full of water so i think we're going to uh, clean it up with some form of, I don't know, maybe vapor hone or, or I don't know, we'll see. And then uh, clean off some of the, the death coating before we weld it. <laughs> I don't need to lose more brain cells than I already have. Some of it's already painted, so it's really nice. I love welding painted things too. I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we need to make a, where are we at? I think we sort of started on a dump tube. We haven't welded that up. We we're waiting. Uh, that's, that's just got to get welded. Yeah, we got a flange and some bits and pieces to do there. I think we're going to aim to shoot down there with it. Yeah, it'll uh, just go right between the the frame and the uh, manifold. Yep. Just boop, and then shoot straight down. Yeah, we got to swap our fuel injectors in, uh, space up the rail a little bit because our injectors are longer than what we've currently got in there. Um, we got some, again, Chinesium injector adapters that we are going to toss in there. Man, what else we got before this turns uh, up and functional? Uh, Pressure checking a bunch of stuff. Boost controller, that's super simple. We could go off of the, off the nipple. Yeah, and so it's literally just like right here and goes straight from there to there. That's, um, yeah, hint the wiring. Oh yeah, uh, wide wiring, band. Wide yep. band. Yep, yep. 
we did wire in our fan harness. We've got it coming oh, off yeah. this. Well, mostly. Uh, coming off this power lug, goes down here. We've got it mounted temporarily to the ECU cover. It may move, we'll see. Yeah, I may have put it too close. <clears throat> we'll see. There's not much going on over there, but the fans are <laughs> chunky, to say the least. These are some beefy boys. So, but it's kind of where we're at right now. I don't think we've got a whole lot left. It's just uh, just the doing it. Yep, now it's just man hour. Yep.